So today, I am going to go over how you can take a miniature like this, uh, which is what you would call battle ready, uh, and take it to the next level of parade ready. I'm going to go over several different things, uh, some tips to make it easier on yourself, uh, as well as some just some general techniques to get yourself there. <laughs> May your parade ready be parade ready. I hope so. So I'm just going to start off with a, a basic sort of idea of what makes a good and bad miniature. Um, this will be a little bit philosophical for a second. Won't be painting, but we'll get to painting. So when you have your miniature, in this case, my soul drinker here, he's got the army has three main colors, gold, uh, an off-white, and a purple. You always want those three colors on every miniature so you have a cohesive look here and but you also want to make sure is that you have every one of those colors on every facing of the miniature so that no matter where you look you will always be seeing those three colors so for this in this case let's start with the front you look at the front do you see all three colors yet you obviously see the purple you see the gold here and here you see the white on the helmet white on the shield even if the shield wasn't here he'd have the white helmet look at this side do you still see their three colors? Yes. Purple here, gold here and here, the white on the shoulder pad, and the helmet. On the back, same thing. White, gold, purple. And on this side, same thing. Less gold, but there is some gold here, here, white, and purple. So then a, so an example of a bad miniature, then, would be this. Yes, family show, correct. This would be considered a quote-unquote bad miniature. Um, in this facing... Oh, I forgot to say, also... Top down, how most people will see your miniatures, gold, white, purple. So, from this facing, sort of 40 degrees, 650 degrees, you have your colors. You have the gold in there on the chest, the white, and the purple. But almost every other facing, there's no gold here and barely any white. The back, there's no gold and white. Side, again, barely some gold, barely some white. So this is the kind of thing you want to think about when you take your miniatures to the next level of parade ready. Um, if you're what you're doing with parade ready miniatures more often than not is taking them to possibly a tournament where you want to try to compete for best painted or maybe a paint competition, things like that. And in those instances, the judges are going to be walking around and seeing all of your miniature. So your miniature might look fine from this way, but if it looks boring from here, that's going to give the judges bad taste in their mouth and think that maybe you didn't really try as hard as you could and you might lose the competition because of that. So that's the first thing you want to think about for parade ready. So to get this guy up to snuff on parade ready, the very first thing I'm going to do is take some of this white, this off white. In that case, this is Wraithbone. And I'm going to put it in a couple more places. So this, this angle, we're absolutely good with the white. He has a white helmet. People generally tend to look at heads anyway, so you're good. Same with top down, not a problem. So this, we don't have to think about it. This way, this might be a time to think about it. And so how am I going to get white onto this side of the miniature? There's not really like a side-facing detail or whatever. So in this case, um, I on some of my miniatures, I have a knee pad that's a different color. So I'm going to put it on this knee pad because this way you can see his head. You don't need to have more white on this side. This way, harder to see the head, so we're gonna put it on this kneecap. So I'm just gonna take the right bone, and I'm gonna put it on this kneecap. Just being careful not to get on the purple around it, and just covering up the kneecap. doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect um, we can always come back and fix it later with something else but just so that you have a nice smooth circle covering the knee pad I'm not quite smooth enough over here I totally never thought about this hey 
learn new things every day. It's exciting, though. I'm happy that it might actually help somebody. All right, so there you go. So now his knee pad on that side is white. And now from this angle, we have the white we need. We have the white here. We have the white here. Even when he's at a bit of an angle and this is mostly covered, we've got the white on that knee pad. It also increases the front coverage of the white because now we have two separate instances. So then we're going to go to the back. The back is where he needs the most help uh, because there's currently nothing except the main color and then some... Uh, tertiary colors, which are neutral colors, so that's not really a help. Tertiary colors don't need to be on every face. Uh, really, you're just looking for the primary color, in which case is purple, and the secondary colors, which is the gold and the white. So here, and this is another thing you want to do, so I know that in this case, this captain, I put white things on his shoulders, or on his backpack here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Just gonna look at him and I'm gonna do the topmost parts of his backpack in the white. Still in the wraith bone. Have not switched off the wraith bone yet. Just gonna completely cover these two things. sure we have complete coverage there's a little bit of purple sticking out here butts all right and this one this is an easy way we're gonna I think we're gonna go easiest to hardest here on uh, techniques this is an easy way to get yourself towards parade ready because it's just more painting. There's no special technique or anything. Wow, that brush got messed up. There we go. Um, this is just a just more painting layers on top of things. We'll work up, get a little bit harder later. All right, so then now from this angle, we have the white and the purple. So, which means, if we now go and look at all our sides, front on, this uh, backpack part here is helping us, and we have the helmet. Front, we now have both the backpack parts, the knee pad and the helmet. Side, the side of the knee pad, technically the top of the helmet, and the backpack. And then from the back, we have the backpack areas. So, that's our first secondary color sorted out. Now, we need to do the gold. Oh, and from the top, we have the white from the top. Uh, now we're going to move on to the gold, and we're going to think about what could we possibly do to get gold onto everybody. From the front, it's okay. Um, it's here on the on the gun, and it's here behind the gun. It's not the most prevalent, but it is there. Your eye will see it when you go to look at it. So we're going to turn now and look at this side. There's no gold on this side. So we have to figure out a way to get some gold onto this side. And so one of the things that might be a good idea. Oh, for this I'm going to use the greatest gold, Retributor Armor. So the first thing when I look at this miniature that jumps out to me that would be gold would be these little lines right there. But that would mean that our two secondary colors were touching. It's not necessarily something you have to stick to, but I tend to not want to have my two secondary colors touching. I always want the primary goal or primary color rather to be in between them. So I'm going to look for something else instead. And I think again, going back to this figure, I'm going to do his shoulder lining in gold. And this shoulder lining, as you're going to see in a second, is actually going to be almost all the gold we're going to need because of it, where it's placed. So I'm just going to make sure to not get any on the pad of the shoulder pad or the lining down there. Just the trim itself. 
And uh, in this instance, well, sometimes you want to think about when you're designing an army scheme that you may not want to use things like gold and silver um, as your secondary colors, because especially in when thinking about military rankings, gold and silver can imply different ranks. And so you will lose the benefit of that if your secondary color is gold or silver. In this case, if everyone has gold on them, then having a gold shoulder pad does not denote a rank to anybody. So that's something to think about. Um, in this case, when I eventually get this army all up to parade ready and beyond, they'll all have symbols on them. Um, and so that will denote the rank. And so the gold will not be used for that. But it is something to keep in mind if um, you have monochromatic, um, if you or not monochromatic, if you have just a simple like transfer on each shoulder that just has your chapter symbol on it, um, and no other markings for denoting ranks, you may want to think about not using gold and silver as a secondary color. Sometimes it's impossible though. Sometimes, like if you're painting an ultramarine and second company, whatever company that is, and they have gold shoulder trim and there's nothing you can do about that, so. Uh, yes, for instance, <laughs> kind of like the Ultramarine second company, I'll have gold trim on the pauldrons. Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right, so then we're doing that. Now we're going to spin them around here. From the front, we have our gold. From the side, we have our gold. From the back, we still have our gold. And from the top, we still have that gold. So that shoulder pad knocked out one, two, three, four sides just with that one shoulder pad. So the only thing we have left now is this side. And honestly, we could leave it just with this symbol here. But I think we can get a little fancy. And we can add a little bit more. Where am I going to do it? Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you got to really stop and think about where you're going to put these these markings. Um, and, and this is actually a great example. Um, yes, I literally just said that. Yes, you sure did. Um, I should read chat and see if they've already come up with uh, come up with the ideas I have. Um, other shoulder, other pauldron trim. Yes, that would be an option. Um, I'm not a personally a big fan of having both my shoulder pads in this army be the same color but that definitely would be an option uh and in fact on this miniature that's pretty much the only option that we have uh but unless we're going to paint random armor panels in this color and i'm not a fan of doing that so in this case i am just going to leave it so that gold actually this gold may be a darker gold so i'm just going to gold up that gold a little bit and then leave it. This may be painted in bronze, actually. So I'm just gonna put some of this Retributor on there to make sure it's very bright. Yeah, it was, it was painted in a, a bronze color. So now that I've golded it up, I'm just gonna leave it like that. They don't have to follow the codex, that's true. All right, so now we have primary and secondary color on all facings of the miniature. And it looks like we we thought about it, took our time, and made sure that all the colors on the army were facing in every direction. So now I'm going to move on to the next possible thing to uh, to move to parade ready. I'm going to do it on this guy. Um, and it's it involves... I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab my ink. I don't know where my ink is, but it's here somewhere, I'm sure. This will work. Actually, no, I'll use the lighter one. And I'll talk about that in just a second, as soon as I find it. If I find it. Well, here's the first thing. This is the first thing that I pulled up. And I was going to use this. Uh, shish purple or shyish purple. Um, and you do want a dark color. But I think in this instance, it's just going to be slightly too dark. And it's going to read as black. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use Magos purple which seems very light, but I believe should still work. And what we're going to do is we're going to 
pin wash, as it's called, or panel wash, the edges of the armor. So we're not just going to take the ink and put it all over everything. We're just going to put it in the places that it matters. So I'm going to take it, and this is going only on the purple. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to put it down here on the foot, in between the panels of the foot. Just like that. And I'm going to switch paintbrushes, because I don't like pin washing with this paintbrush. And I'm going to put it down here. Down there. And if you get a little too much on the armor, just get your brush wet. Come back and just blend it into the armor panel. It's not a big deal. And just do this anywhere where there are panels in the purple armor. Just going to do it there and around the knee pad here. On the other foot, get the brush wet and just blend that in. There we go. And do this knee pad down here. Good. And notice I'm not doing this in every single panel line um, you really don't need to you can if you're going to a paint competition uh, you may want to but just for parade ready you just need to get some variance in your colors I'm just using a wet brush here to wipe off the mistakes I don't know how much it's gonna read on camera but you should be able to see the difference between this guy's foot and this guy's foot and that's really all you need, that's all you're looking for. It's just so that if someone looks there, they're not seeing the purple go all the way in. They're looking and they're seeing some shadow in those panels. I'm not going to go through and do the whole miniature like that for right now. Because it takes a long time and it's not very interesting to watch. Um, I am just going to do the back panel here. I think this is one of the greatest panels on a Space Marine. Uh, on a Primera Space Marine in particular. I'm going to do the joint here down around this circular part and then too much paint on the brush and then this line going across the armor here and then just wipe away the excess to about 20 minutes when I did it yesterday yeah not the most entertaining thing to have on stream, so I'm not going to go through and do the whole thing. Um, so then I'm going to move to what possibly might be more, or rather sim simpler than the pin washing that we just did. Um, but it's it requires more thinking. The pin wash is just find a panel line, put wash in it. This we need to start thinking about how we can differentiate colors. So... I'm just going to go through and differentiation between parts is what makes your miniatures look cool. Um, so in this case, I have two different things here. I have a skeleton and I have some cloth or vellum or something, parchment maybe. They're the same color, but they're not the same thing. So I'm going to go and I'm going to change the color of one of them. And there's multiple ways you could do this. You could wash and highlight. You could just wash. You could just highlight. You could do all sorts of stuff. You could blend if you felt up to it. I don't. So I'm going to first do a pin wash on the skeleton. As soon as I find the color I need. This is the theme of this stream. Where are your colors? For that, I'm going to use skeleton hoard. I know. Convenient. Skeleton hoard on a skeleton. So I'm just going to make sure that all the panels, or not all the panels, all the gaps in the skeleton's body are filled in with this color. I am going to go over some of the bones, so I'm going to come back and highlight it later. So I'm just going to wash over the whole skeleton. With this color. I'm 
All right. That's all that. Get his arm here. And you just want to make sure with this that it's not pooling anywhere. At least too much. It will pool a little bit, but... Some places it's allowed to pool. Like in a shoulder joint there. So then... Now that I've done that, as you can see, obviously the skeleton has darkened down. Because we put ink on it. So now... We're going to go the opposite direction with the parchment vellum, whatever it happens to be. And we're going to lighten that. So I'm going to use vampiric highlight for this. Uh, any bright white will do for this step. I'm just going to find myself a little palette or something here. This will work. So I darkened the skeleton. So I'm going to brighten the vellum. So I'm going to take my highlight color here. And I'm going to basically edge highlight, but not worried about if it gets on there more than an edge highlight would. So really highlighting about the top third of everything, if you want to think about it like that. Or in this case, the bottom third. Since the top is hidden by shadow, it wouldn't need to be a color. And then go along the edges of these. And then the edges of this one. And then I'm just going to go across on a couple of these ridges here. Make sure I get it on this one also. Paintbrush fight me. Just get it on some of these cross sections of that all right so then our ink looks almost dry so i'm going to go back now with wraithbone which is the color that was originally on both of these things and i'm going to highlight the skeleton with that because i just put the ink on it this will give differentiation obviously but also because i just brightened the parchment these two things will now read differently. Even more than they would normally with just the wash in there. So I'm just going to go through and get all the raised parts of the skeleton here. Just like this. Sure, you get his face. All right. So that'll be him done. And then, as you can see, at least hopefully you can see on camera, even though they started as the same color, the skeleton with the wash plus the re highlighting of the main color reads much differently than these vellum parchment pieces. So then let's take a look at the time. Oh, we got plenty of time. All right, I'm going to move on to what is one of the most difficult, but can also be one of the easiest parts of upping your miniature to parade ready and that's edge highlighting it's the ever dreaded edge highlighting everybody hates to edge highlight well maybe there's maybe there's some people who like edge highlighting everyone i've met with the very 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 professional few exceptions hates to edge highlight it takes a long time if you mess up everyone notices it's terrible we're gonna do easy mode edge highlighting though so i'm gonna use some jean steel or purple 
Nothing else in the chat, just great. <laughs> All right. So, looking at your miniature. How are most people going to see your miniature? Again, we're going back to the philosophy of painting for a second. How are most people going to see your miniature? They're not going to see it like this. You don't play miniature games two inches away from your face. They're going to see it like this. Probably from about this angle. If you can imagine sitting them sitting on a table. And they're probably going to be farther away. They're going to be even farther back than that, probably. So, as you can see right now, it is almost impossible to see down in here and down there all that so you don't need to edge highlight that who cares no one's gonna see it you don't need to edge highlight so we're just gonna edge highlight the top of the figure so i'm gonna take some paint and i make sure my brush is not overloaded and also on camera i'm gonna turn the miniature sideways and i'm gonna use the side of my brush and i'm just gonna do the tops i'm gonna do a line there nice crisp line going across there and I know this just looks like normal edge highlighting right now and it is but we're going to get to the easy mode don't worry this part you just have to muddle through and you have to do it but then we're going to get to easy mode don't worry it's coming um, this is another reason right here as to why I don't like to do the other uh, both shoulder pads lining in a secondary color is because this is the top of the miniature and it's giving me a lot of edge highlight work here on the top of the miniature where people are going to see it. If I had done that in gold, which is a possibility, you can absolutely do it, I wouldn't have these surfaces to edge highlight. And so I'd have to work harder to make sure that the other edge highlights were super crisp. But you know, it's fine. It's a possibility. I just don't personally prefer it. So let's see. I'm going to get his the top of his hand here. And the key to edge highlighting is you want to have a very good brace position on your hands. If you have a good brace position, everything else will flow into place. Gold is totally easy to edge highlight. You're absolutely right. But I need a big enough surface area of purple with edge highlights to show off the edge highlights on the purple so I can cheat down on the legs. That was the point of that. Not that gold is difficult to edge highlight or anything, just that I need enough edge highlighting, edge highlighted purple up top to allow me to cheat later. I'm just gonna do sides of the shield here. And then I'm gonna do this back part. This is not technically an edge because the two panels are butting right up against each other. Best answer, don't paint your brains purple. Yep, that is a that's an option. I'm just going to go along this panel very carefully. And then up sides here. All right. So that's that done. I'm now going to go to a lighter purple. Dichala Lilac, which is now a layer paint, uh, just if you're looking for it. It says Edge on it. They don't sell Edge paints anymore. It's now a layer paint. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did, but I'm only going to do it on middle of edges and corners. So I'm just going to come right here to the shield. I'm just going to do that. That. I promise we're getting to the cheating part. We're not going to edge highlight this whole figure. So it's just like that. It's hard to see on camera. But you just want the lighter color just on the edges or corners, rather. Uh, this part, there is no corner, so we just do it in the middle. Just like that. On this, we do it in the middle on his hand. And then on the shoulder pad, we do it on the corners. All 
And this color is a light purple, almost approaching white. And if you wanted to, you then could go another step after this and do in the very, very corner, do a white dot. I don't personally think that it's necessary, but you can do it. And this, I'm just going to get the corners here. A little bit of a goof there. See if I can get it off with just some wet paint or wet brush rather. If not, I'll come back and fix it later. It's not the end of the world. Good. Fixed. All right. So now that you've done that, you've got your two edge highlights up top here. Hard to see on camera, but that's they're hard to see on the tabletop too. The point is, <laughs> this is parade ready. You don't need them, but if you want to get there, you can go that step. So now we're going to come to the cheating. I'm going to go back to the Gene Sealer Purple. I'm going to get a flat brush. In this case, uh, Army Painter brush. But just make sure it's flat. I'm going to get some paint on my brush. I'm going to wipe most of it off, and then we're going to be doing some very selective dry brushing. Dry brushing has a bad stigma in my mind where uh, most people think it's sloppy or it's the easy way out or whatever but I happen to think it's great so we're going to do this now on all the other edges of the model that we didn't edge highlight I'm just going to be very careful and we're just going to go on the edges of this Go on the edge of this, and I'm using the flat of the brush so that I just get the edges of these armor panels. You might need to go over it a bunch. As you can see on the shoulder pad or on the elbow pad there, that's what we're looking for. So I'm just gonna go over everywhere that these panel lines exist. And of course, the alternative to this is you just like we did up top here, you just do that all over the miniature. You just edge highlight all the way through, and that's fine. I prefer to do the least amount of work I possibly can, and then cheat the rest of it. And of course, that applies to miniature painting, but not to life. Please don't cheat at school, kids. Please don't cheat at your job. Especially if you do the numbers for large financial institutions. We don't need a second Enron. But for miniature painting, cheating's all about... Cheating's great. Get stuff done. And I just heard recently, I'm going to steal this. This was from a YouTuber I, I watch uh, named Vince Venturella. And he stole it from his wife. And the quote is that perfect is the opposite of done. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's a great quote. I think it... Um, so not endorsing corporate fraud then. Got it. Yes, correct. Not endorsing corporate fraud. Um, but yeah. Perfect is the opposite of done. Um, it applies to miniature painting quite well. Don't try to make something perfect. Try to get it done. If you try to make it perfect, you'll never get it done. And I think that's perfect motto to live by. Um, if you spend your entire life trying to get one perfect miniature, you'll never have a painted army. And that miniature will also never be perfect. There are zero perfect miniatures out in the world. Absolutely zero. Always something could be improved. So don't try to get your miniatures to be perfect. Try to get them... You can, you can make them extremely good. Nothing wrong with that. You can spend 120 hours on a miniature. More if you want. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But at some point, you have to say... This is it. I've done it. This is as good as it's going to get. Uh, I'm going back for the Chala Lilac, by the way. 
at some point, the miniature is to a point where it is no longer worth continuing to work on it. And that's the point where you need to put it down and be done. And you can move on to another miniature. And if you do that, you will eventually have a fully painted army. So I'm just doing the exact same thing we did with the actual edge highlights with this dry brush. Just going in the middle of things. I'm just doing very light dry brush on the edges. Get this back here. You want to be very gentle when you're dry brushing like this. One, because you don't want to get paint where it doesn't belong. But two, because you're the amount of liquid that you have on your paint is less. Your surface that you're using, i.e. your paintbrush, is a much rougher texture. And if you're not careful and you scrub too hard or something, you can rub paint off of your miniature. And you definitely don't want that. That's just a pain. No one wants it. Yeah, pulling out the Enron references is right. hard to watch this and drive. I don't condone that either. <sighs> no watching anything and driving except traffic. The road ahead of you. That's what you should be watching. All right. So that I think about does it for that step anyway. So we we for real edge highlighted up here up at the top, and then we fake edge highlighted down at the bottom. But since most people will be looking at the top of your miniature, it doesn't matter. Alright, so what else can we do to this guy that we haven't done? The Emperor protects. He doesn't protect against traffic. Um, so what else can we do to this guy to make him parade ready? Obviously we could do the same thing that we've done to other colors on more of the colors. So we could edge highlight the white on his helmet, all over everything. We could edge highlight the gold. We'd probably want to two-tone the gold. Do all sorts of stuff. But what else can we do that's a new technique that we haven't done yet? Um, in my opinion, the thing to do now is to find details and change their color. What that means is, for instance, let's see. So on his sword, the sword's a good idea. Um, from back here... His sword is silver. Great. But he does have a power bead on his sword. So we're going to change that color. I'm going to do some Baharoth blue. This blue goes with purple. The dude is purple. So we're going to add this. You're the reason insurance is high for 16 to 18 year olds. Yep. Driving, watching a live stream. You're the reason. So I'm going to get some Baharoth blue here. And I'm going to do this power bead. And this, I'm not sure if I already mentioned this, but this is something you want to think about for parade ready miniatures. You always want to have two tones on something. So I'm going to paint this power bead and power line here in Baharov blue. And then I need to put a second color on it. You never want to leave something on a parade ready miniature with a single color on it. Wow, I messed that up big time. I'm going to get my. <laughs> get my silver back out and fix that real quick uh, my silver on this sword is iron warriors just had too much paint on my brush and it bled over a little bit onto the sword bleed good and then go back to the Baharov blue And so on something this small, you might be thinking, well, how can we get a second tone on it? Um, we're going to highlight this with some white. And just to be clear, there are painters who can get five, six, seven, eight tones on a power bead like this. I ain't one of those people. We're going to stop with two. But I'm sure there are, 
there are painters out there that you can find that let's say you put two colors on your power bead ew of course they wouldn't say that because 90 percent of miniature professional miniature painters are very nice but they would put many more tones so we're going to highlight this in the same way you'd highlight a, highlight a lightsaber and that is i'm going to get some vampiric highlight again same white we used earlier and i'm going to highlight the very tip of the power bead i'm just going to put a little dot at the end just like that do it on this side also And then we're going to make sure our paint is super thin. And we're going to highlight the middle of the power wire here with the white. Just like that. And that will give the impression that power is flowing through it. And there's a bright point. Just like that. And there you go. Now we have a power bead that looks like it's doing something powerful. Um, and actually, this is a technique I realized I was just doing, but didn't show you. Um, so when I'm edge highlighting something, this is basically an edge highlight. I'll hold the miniature, take the paintbrush, rest it on my thumb, get it to the right angle, and then just move it back and forth using the basically the tension in your skin to hold it but you can get your paintbrush super steady and just go back and forth over a spot and get a perfect edge highlight. So I'm just going to do that a couple more times, uh, changing the colors of details on this guy. Um, the biggest and most obvious one is the shield right here. You do something with the shield, put a free hand on it or something. I don't know if I want to attempt a free hand on stream. Um, I guess I will. What's the worst that can happen? Everybody hates me. I think they'll get over it. So I'm going to use some Retributor armor first. I'm going to sketch my freehand. So I'm going to freehand a... What am I going to freehand? I'm going to freehand a chalice, I guess. That's what the chapter symbol is. Um, so for freehanding, you always want to... You don't want to just draw... You're essentially drawing when you're uh, freehanding. You don't want to just draw the thing you're drawing. If you're gonna, if I'm gonna draw a chalice, I'm not gonna draw a chalice. I'm gonna look at a chalice, and I'm gonna draw it big here, so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna think about a chalice, and I really should pull up some reference for this, but I'm not going to in this case. I painted a lot of chalices, um, so I'm gonna look at a chalice. What shapes are in a chalice? Well, we've got a half circle. That's the shape that's in a chalice. We've got a triangle, the bottom here, and we've got a, oh, that's not on camera. Ignore that triangle. There's no triangle there. Here we go. There's a triangle, and there's a cylinder. Those are your three basic shapes of a chalice, and you want to think about that for all sorts of things. Um, a lot of people, the like chapter symbols for Space Marines, for instance, are often complicated and very challenging. Um, but if you break them down into their individual shapes, they can get a lot easier. So, for instance, the Space Wolf uh, chapter symbol, a wolf's head, looks crazy complicated. But when you look at it, break it down, and when you break it down, it actually turns into just a bunch of triangles. Everything is triangles in that thing. So if you just work on drawing triangles which is something we've all done since kindergarten just draw triangles draw them all next to each other where they need to be and then fill it in and you will have your symbol and then you can go back in and highlight within the train or in the freehand and all that stuff um the only unfortunately the only uh chapter symbol where it does not work is the ultramarine symbol that thing is pure witchcraft uh the people who can freehand an ultramarine symbol if you see someone who can do that ask them many questions because they are a good painter it's got it's got these two little thingies which sure i can break that down fine then it has a u but it doesn't just have a u like this 
It has a U. <coughs> Excuse me. That starts skinny, gets fat, gets skinny again, and then is symmetrical on the other side. The symmetrical one is the part that's going to kill you. So you can, you know, you can start, you can start getting, and then come around to be fatter. But you want to make this a constant curve. If it's not a constant curve, it's going to look weird. So I'm already gone astray here. Do that. And then I'm going to try to do it on the other side. But I've already gone astray here. Do that. And then I have to try to do the inside of this somehow. So it's coming around, but you got to keep the curve, the constant on both sides. And it's just, it's just not a thing I can do. So like I said, if you can find someone who can freehand the ultramarine symbol, you keep them forever. You, I'm not going to condone you lock them in a dungeon and use their painting skills, but I wouldn't be upset with someone. I would understand why someone did if they did that. So I'm going to freehand this chalice though after wasting all the time on the ultramarine symbol. So I'm going to just do the three... The three shapes, one at a time. So I'm going to get a really thin brush here. And I'm going to start at the bottom with the triangle. So I'm going to paint a triangle. I'm just going to go right across the bottom here. And paint a triangle. Making sure that my lines start and end the same distance from the sides. You always want your brush nice and wet for freehanding. And this is just a sketch. It does not have to be exact. So then I'm going to draw the rectangle or the cylinder. In a two dimensional shape, it's a rectangle. Just making sure it's completely squared up with the bottom. And then I'm going to draw the half circle. And the way I like to draw a half circle is I'll do the top first. Get some more water on my brush. And then connect the dots of the half circle. Trying to get the sides symmetrical, but not necessarily the end of the world. And then just go in and fill in your new detail that you've essentially painted on to your miniature. Fill it in here. And there you go. That's not the prettiest freehand in the world, but you can see how breaking it down into its individual shapes can make it a lot easier to come to terms with a freehand. I'm just going to shape it a little more here. There we go. Um, then you'd want to go in and do some internal details on your freehand and all that, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. I'm just going to check the time. 150. All right, we're coming up right on it. So I'm just going to do a quick recap of everything we talked about, um, how to get your miniatures from battle ready to parade ready. First thing is you want to make sure you have your primary colors and secondary colors on every facing. So we got your white and gold here, white and gold here, white and gold here, White and gold here. Just want to do that for all your miniatures. Can I see both secondaries and primary from every side? Yes, I can. And you want to make sure to get the top also, because a lot of people will see your miniatures from the top. Then we went, what did we do after that? So we did those. Then you want to find things that are the same color and differentiate them. So in this case, we had the skeleton and the parchment. They were the same color. We shaded one down and then brightened one up that's an easy way to differentiate two things 
move one in a darker way, move one in a lighter way. Then we did our edge highlighting slash cheaty highlighting. So we edge highlighted the top of the miniature, uh, completely normal edge highlighting, two-toned edge highlighting, one color go across the lines or the edges of armor, then second color just do the corners. And then we did the cheaty highlight at the bottom, down here on the feet, and down here. And so when you look at the miniature as a whole, it looks like the whole thing's edge highlighted. Most people's eyes are drawn to the top of the miniature though. So the crisp highlights are up there. Then we went through and found details to paint a different color. Uh, this can be anything, by the way. It doesn't have to be so obvious as a power bead on a weapon like this. This could be so I could take these, take the chain links on this thing, and the bigger links could be a one color and the smaller links could be a different color. It could be all sorts of stuff. These little triangles here on the knee pad, they could be a different color. Those rivets, those could be a different color. So we'll go through and pick out things that are one color, change them to a different color. And then adding free hands. Uh, in my opinion, if you were going to say an army is parade ready, it needs to have all its, in this case, Space Marine Army, needs to have all its chapter badges, rank insignia, everything has to be on it. If you have blank shoulder pads, your army is not parade ready. Um, but battle ready, you don't have to have that stuff, in my opinion. Parade ready, though, there's a higher standard. You need to have all that stuff done. So before I would ever call this miniature parade ready, obviously I would finish edge highlighting everything, differentiating details and all that, but then I would also make sure there's a chapter symbol on this shoulder pad. He has a molded shoulder pad on this side, so I don't need to do rank insignia, and then make sure this shield with the chalice on it is done. And that's really it. You just have to go through, and this is obviously a very complicated miniature. Um, on this guy that we did the secondary colors on, it's much easier to get finished with him. Basically, an edge highlight on this, a bunch of detailed differentiation on the gun, and you're basically set um, for parade ready. This, of course, is also not going into basing. Um, I may do a how to make your bases parade ready stream in the future. In my opinion, again, this base that just has a single texture on it, nothing else, this is not a parade-ready base. This is a how-to-lose-a-parade competition base. Battle-ready? Absolutely. Perfect. It's got texture. It's got color. The rim is painted black. You're all set. This is not a parade-ready base, though. So that would also be something we'd have to look at. But yeah, that's it for this episode. Um, on Wednesday, I will be streaming over on the main... Uh, galactic page doing some D, D painting and then on friday i'll be back here again hope possibly doing parade ready bases we'll have to see thanks everybody for watching and i will see you next time